Today we are going over the best way I've found to cable up a SAN to your network. Okay, so you're at a point in your network where you're adding more storage and you'd like to be able to share that storage between a bunch of servers. Now, the best way to do that is with a SAN, storage area network. So you have a network that just contains storage and you can address it um, through iSCSI and connect to it and then share it between all of the hosts. Let's flip the SAN around here. Okay, so now we see we've got up here on the top, we've got an A side controller and a B side controller. And we've got one, two, three, four ports for data and one for management. <clears throat> so we need to hook all these up and we got the other ports on the B side. So this really allows the controller and the SAN to be redundant, right? If one of these controllers fails, then the other controller will run, just like it has two power supplies. If one of those power supplies fails, <clears throat> then the SAN will continue to run. So then we've got a network switch and we have a server down here. So let's look at what we've got here. So we've got data ports, management ports, and our switch. Um, so these data ports, we want to connect um, the data ports to a specific part of our network and the management ports for a different part of our network. Um, I use 172 uh, networks. It's like 172.16. So if you look at the, um, the this IP private address spacing that's defined by the RFC 1918, we have a lot of servers will like Microsoft came out with many servers and they default to 10.0.0.0 slash eight. And that gives you a huge amount of IP address space. Many people in their home um, networks also see that, you know, they'll connect to something. It'll say 192.168.1. something or dot zero dot something. So we don't usually see 172 in your <clears throat> regular house kind of home networking or anything else. But I do use this 172.16s to manage my storage network and keep all of that separated since that's not routable on the internet. Okay, so now we've got that. So now, and down here on the server, we're gonna have a network that's pushing all the VLANs to our server. So what I really wanna do though, since I have two controllers up here, I really would rather have two switches. Now the two switches allows me to create a stack of switches. That means that if one fails, the other one's gonna keep working and I can manage them all as one piece. Now on the back of these switches, there are some, they, these are, Dell uses SAS ports, um, just like, uh, you know, hard drive storage controllers, if you add extra trays to your SAN, they'll often use SAS cables. Well, this is using the same type of cable. <clears throat> um, Netgear will use uh, 10 gig uh, Cat5 cable to connect all of their switches and other companies will may have some other kind of dedicated uh, line. But you can connect them together and daisy chain them together so that they become uh, like one switch itself. Okay, so that way if one of these switches goes out, both of them have the same type of configuration and the bottom part, you know, will stay working. Okay, so for management ports, we want to connect, since we're doing this, we want to connect one management port to basically our top switch, A, another management port to our bottom switch, B. Okay, then we'll run one, one cable from the top switch to our server, another cable from the top switch to our server. Now, what we really want to do here at this point is take, is wire up these ports on the SAN. So I'm going to take this top port here and I'm going to connect it to the first LAN port there. So now we've got a one port over there. I'm gonna take the second one and connect it to the second port. Now I go to the third port and I'm gonna connect that down here to the third port of the lower switch. And I'm gonna do that same thing down to the lower switch for this one. So now if you see if the top switch dies, <clears throat> if my A switch dies here, we're still gonna have communication because there's connection to the bottom switch. So then let me change my uh, color of my wiring here. Okay, I didn't want to do that. Okay, 
changes the color of my wire again and go now we're going to go to the bottom switch so the first two ports of the bottom switch controller on the sand we're going to go to the first port the next one we're going to go to the next port and then same way we did before we're going to move that over there and put this one to the next one so now we have this completely cross interconnected set of cables between our switches and our controllers so if we lose one of the controllers then we still have four paths to the lower controller if we lose one of these switches we still have four paths but one is to one controller two are to one controller and two are to the other controller so that at least helps us maintain you know four gig worth of store speed into our um, sand if one of those things fails right so if if one of the controllers fails we still have four if one of the switches fails we still have four and we're still communicating and we're still able to communicate on our switch be down here in, in the server because we have connections to both sides so beyond this so after this part I would definitely take and look at getting a dedicated storage card for my server something with uh, TCP offload which allows you to it does some of the network processing for the server and allows it to communicate you know more readily with iSCSI and handle some of that so it's a lot of interconnected pieces um, but this is kind of how I set it up to be the most resilient that if if both switches go you're definitely not going to be communicating or if both controllers go you're not communicating but this uh, setup allows me to lose one of these pieces and still be able to keep things running now on the server side um, VMware um, and stuff has a high availability set up to where I could have multiple servers and if one of those servers died it would move the VMs and start them on another host so even that can be set up as being resilient and then still be able to communicate back to your SAN okay lots of wires lots of things going on but this is probably this is the best way that I found to maintain your network and keep it going now it gets pretty crazy because if you imagine you had a SAN and 10 servers so they're all going to be connected and blended in there so keeping a chart and keeping a graph and going into the ports what really also helps is going into the ports each individual port and make sure you label that port in the software like in the management console you go in there you label it this is port one that goes to you know SAN controller port a port one so that you know that you know this line here that's right here okay this is going to this point and that helps you and if you have some type of uh, management software like what's up gold or solar winds that's going to dig in there through snmp when you're reading out of the switches and that information comes and gets shown inside of what's up gold or solar winds that it'll label it for you that that's what it is so you'll know if a port goes down and one of these switches goes down it'll actually show you in your management through snmp to be able to see what controllers down what port is down all that stuff and it actually gives you that label so you know what's going on when you get your alert okay all right well that's how to connect up a sand that's how i do it um i've connected up quite a few of these over the years and uh, sand or nas you can do kind of the same thing some nases don't have that many ports uh you can typically uh, a nas will only have four ports and one controller uh, where the SAN is a little bit more enterprise grade resilient that it's got two power supplies two separate controllers and basically a lot of wires and a lot of cables coming out of the back um, I do typically buy uh, cables to length and the specific color so that I know you know red cables going into this that's my SAN connection that's my data you know blue cables are my management ports and I plug all those in so it makes it easier when you're in the back of a rack to be able to see kind of what's going on and what's connected and you know if I know this is 172 that it's storage it should have a red cable in it and if not then something might be you know something got wired wrong kind of things like that all right we have any questions or anything about how to hook up sands or 
get storage set up on your network, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure and answer it. Uh, thanks for watching this video and if you like my videos like this about networking and computers and things like that, then subscribe to my channel. I also do videos about other things I like and possibly don't like about movies and TV and photography. All right, if you like any of that stuff, just subscribe, hit the bell, and then you'll get all my videos right when I make them. All right, thanks for watching. Take care.